Hola, hola, hola. Hello, everyone. 92.6, the spot. We are back. The trio, the thresh, the three. Not right, not wrong. We are back. You can watch us on everything, you name it, we on it. Um, iHeart or Apple or Amazon, everywhere. YouTube, subscribe, hit the button, watch the old shows, watch the new shows, watch it with people, binge watch it. Not right, night wrong, we on everywhere. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Friday, 92.6 the spot. I am the dark mark. As you all know, with me, I have my co-hosts of the trio. D1 and JJ are in the building with I. Let's check out D1. See how she's doing. D1, holla at the people. How's everything going? Hello, good people. Hello, co-hosts. All is great. All is amazing. Um, life is good. The world is good. I'm smiling, mm. living, mm. loving. Mm. All of those things. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like that place she at. The world is good. Oh, my God. I need that same energy and momentum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, born in 73. Do you want to got something special coming up? Something special. So by the yes, next sir, time we made take, in 73. I can't even show it, but there it is. Born in 73. Some coming up special. If y'all could do the math, you should know what that is. So I ain't even yeah. going to spoil it. Yes. <laughs> also, <clears throat> we have JJ. Yes, sir. I'm my radio voice. <laughs> JJ contemplating about, you know, sharing his gym videos with y'all ladies. So, yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> One of the apps, he might share some with you. <laughs> you know how the boy been getting it in, championing it out, you know, get the Dorito and all that. <laughs> no, no, no. JJ working on his fitness. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> try, try. You know what I'm saying? JJ, holla at your peoples, man. How you doing, King? Well, in my radio voice, I am well. <laughs> not right, not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because I might keep them to myself. Uh, <laughs> Progress. Uh, you can't do that. You got to share it with the world, bro. We're going to talk them into it. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Nah, nah. But all, nah, all is well, man. Just, yeah, just keep it. Just trying to keep the health up. You already know. You know what I mean? This is what you got to do with the state of the game. Just stay at the junction. You know what I mean? So just, just trying to get to it. Keep at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. All as well. Mean, you, had, as well. You, you had one of the episodes about that, about health, being healthy, going to the gym and things of that nature. So mm. you are definitely um, a man of your word. So you do exactly what it is that you tell other people to do. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think it's important, especially for us as <laughs> brothers, as black men. You know what I mean? We got we to gotta get on top of that, you know? So if you all listen to the previous episodes, you know, I touch on that and how, to, how it's... Um, how it's set up for us to fail, how it's set up for us to be unhealthy. You know, they they uh they target our addictions, you know what I'm saying? But I digress, we ain't gonna get into that right now. We're gonna get into the subject at hand today, tonight, rather. Yeah. Man. This will go. Yes. So as you know, we rotate from topic to topic, person to person. So it's dark mark time tonight for me to pick my topic. The topic I chose is black stereotypes. Um Woo! we know a bunch of them, we know many of them, we know a lot of them. Uh, but you know, we're gonna try something different tonight, maybe try to put these stereotypes to rest. Uh we may or may not know the origins of such, but we're gonna try to put them to rest. Um, if any of you still say it, please stop it. <laughs> it's not helping anything or anybody. Um, except if it comes to spades. <laughs> <laughs> That may be true. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that at that. But all the other stereotypes that we're gonna speak upon, we're gonna see where this conversation goes. We're gonna see, we're gonna hear Josh's thoughts and ideas in regards to it, saying it, which a change, the ones he's heard and know about. We're gonna get into the show shoe aspect and and dissect the algorithms of who say what and where. That's Not dissecting algorithms. 
That's kind of D one mindset. Yeah. Why you say that? That sounds. She want to get deep down to it. So yeah. we're gonna head from D one in regards to the black stereotypes and things that may have been said, things that still go on. How do we feel about it, or do we agree with the stereotypes? And we just go on from there. So I'll set it off. I got a couple of things listed here that just came to mind and that wrote down in, in, in regards to it. So you all may have your own or something you want to clear the floor about in regards to stereotypes. But the first one, um, as much as some of the things that we mentioned may take on a comical tone, this is very serious because um, we know how Black people are portrayed in a lot of regards. And we know what that leads to in regards to first impressions and people have perceptions of you outside of you being a human being. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us is human. Then it just goes forward from there. So the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of black stereotypes, um, I thought of food, I'm a fan of food. I love to eat. I don't like sharing my food. Do I do it? Sure, but I don't enjoy doing it. So the first thing that came to mind was fried chicken. So they say all black people like fried chicken. I don't know if that's true or not because stereotypes cannot be proven as fact. It can only be proven as a fact if there is scientific evidence to prove such. Now, how in the world can any of you prove that all, emphasis on all Black people like fried chicken? We don't know that. Mm -hmm. So I like it. I like cooking it. I can't make it as good as my mom or my sister. But I like cooking it. I like eating it. It tastes good. Say the worst part of the fried chicken is the skin. So depending upon how much I've had, I may take the skin off and just eat the meat. But if it's been some time since I've had it, I just dive into it. And I do not eat fried chicken with a fork. I know some of you <laughs> do that. Please stop that, because that is embarrassing. It looks embarrassing. <laughs> just pick it up. No matter how hot it is, <laughs> just pick it up. But I'm going to start with fried chicken in regards to that. I don't know where that comes from or how it has got to where it's at today in regards to that. So I'm going to start with you, JJ, in regards to this whole fried chicken stereotype. What you think about it? Should we just put it to rest? Mm. Do you like fried chicken or help me out with that? Yeah, uh, I too like fried chicken. Uh, I eat fried skin. That's the best part of the chicken to me, the combination of the, the uh, fried skin and the meat. Mm. And I do agree. You know, you got to pick it up, hold it in your hand. Mm. And you, yeah, let me demonstrate here. With the, the there thing. you go. There you go. There you go. The Ladies and gentlemen, right a live demonstration. The technique right here. There you, you know go. Saying? Show them, Ja. Hold it on the ends like that with the fingers like this. There Bong. you go. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be legs or thighs, you hold it the same way. Bong. Oh. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? You bite into it. Boom. Yes. All that being, all that being said, um, the stereotype of black people like liking fried chicken, of course, it's a generalization. Not all black people eat fried chicken, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that to be true, but um, the general the, that generalization came about. Um, I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, I don't know for sure how, but I'm I'm guessing it's how it was uh, marketed to us. And how it, these these are these are one of the foods that's always been marketed and posted up in our neighborhoods. You know, it's mm. it's, it's the chicken spot, the Chinese spot, and the liquor spot. Yeah, yeah, and the and the low and the low grade supermarkets, um, like um, what's it? What you call it? Um, not key food. It's the the other ones. C town, fine fine fair, fine, fine fair C town. There you go, bang. Yeah, fine fair C town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, the low grade supermarkets. So all all that um posted and presented to us in in you know primarily urban neighborhoods, black and brown neighborhoods. So those are that's the type of food that we get exposed to. So that's the type of food and proximity that we gotta eat to sustain ourselves and survive. So um we 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 like the taste of it, we order it often, and so, and we and we eat it. So I think that's where 
in my in my opinion. That's where it started coming about. So, um, and I think if um, the cost, the cost, the cost of chicken, the cost of chicken is cheap. Very so cheap. Is it, yeah, so that's why we we eat a lot of chicken because the cost of chicken is cheap. But I think if if we had a um, rise in our economy. I mean, a rise in, you know, it, it can, in an economic, if we had any economic progress, prowess or progress, we were able to eat uh, more healthier, better foods because he healthy food costs. Very and, much so. Interestingly enough. So if we um, exceed, you know, ex uh, excelled uh, economically, we were able to uh, buy more healthy, but we had to buy within our means. And part of that, part of that is a chicken that's in that group of means that we could buy that's affordable and that we're able to eat. And so I think that's part of it. Um, should we put it to rest? Um, I mean, should we put it to rest? That is a stereotype. Uh, uh, that I'm kind of up in a, I kind of up in, I'm kind of up in the air about that because, um, there's always truth. There's always truth behind, um, every stereotype. There's always some level of truth behind every stereotype. And so, if um, so, that can so the stereotype can only be perpetuated if there's some truth behind it. It's been done like like we already confessed to eating it. We're we're two of many of black and brown people that eat it. Um, chicken and chicken has been a uh, part of our diet in the black and brown community. So it's 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 not a it could be it could be classified as a stereotype, but I put it like this: It shouldn't be a, a stereotype to be ashamed of. We like chicken. Fuck it. It is what it is. We like chicken. Done. Yeah. Eat so, it. So that's, Done. Yeah. so that's my take on that. Yeah. Nah, I dig it. But if if you eat it, you know, like you said, it's also an economic issue, also. Because mm -hmm. you have to eat. You have to eat to live. And then if this was available to you, based on your finances or a Kennedy Fried Chicken, Carolina Fried Chicken, where they have those type of things, then Unfortunately, this is what you have to eat until you are able to eat better. Mm -hmm. Like Josh said. So we're going to keep going in regards to that. I got something else. I'm going to spin around the D1 in regards to this one. Um, this is one of them I definitely know is not true for a, a fact. But, you know, a lot of people seem to think that is true. A lot of people seem to believe that is true. Um I can't say all white people, but a lot of times people judge you based on how you look in regards to this one. And like I said, I just happen to know for a fact that it's not true. So this is in regards to sports. Why do people seem to think that uh, we can all play basketball? Especially if you talk. <gasps> You want, we're going to spin around you, you with that one. Um, we're going to start with you and your athletic prowess, <laughs> especially as it relates to basketball. How many times have you seen examples of this not to be the case? Because I definitely have. I mean, I could throw myself in there. You know, I get on the full court. I'm good for about eight. I ain't even going to lie. I mean, you know, I ain't going to be the one clapping for the rock. Yo, but... I'm going for about eight. I'm going to be on the court. I'm definitely going to be running the full back and forth, but I ain't going to be clapping for you to throw it to me. You understand? <laughs> it's, what it's, it's what it is. So, we want, we're going to spin around to you, same thing. Let's see if we should just put that to bed in regards to this whole athletic prowess, us being able to play, not just basketball, but just play sports in general. But I just use basketball and keeping with the playoffs right now and how it's going. By the way, I want Phoenix Suns to win everything. Go ahead, D1. <laughs> First of all, I am so incredibly athletically inclined. Wow. Okay. Y'all don't that. want it with ho. Y'all don't do want that. It with uh oh. Ho. Uh oh. <laughs> talk that talk. Talk your ish. We could take it to the court, to the basketball court, and I'm going to score some touchdowns. We could take it. 
we get that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mute her mic, Ja. Ja, mute her mic. Ja. Oh and man. I'm gonna kick a field goal. I got some stuff. I got some stuff for y'all. Oh, ja, mute her, please. Damn, D1, I was with you. I was ready. I was I, listen, I, I was I was waiting for the story. I was waiting for the story too. Uh, I was waiting for the buzzer beater. You know, you know I was playing. I was playing at Morgan. Da, da, da. Right, 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 right. Oh, broke a couple of ankles. Right, buzzer beater That's to the man. hoop. I was on Morgan's JV squad. What? Killing them. Water everywhere. <laughs> Shooting Listen. from everywhere. I was player of the year. You know what I'm saying? I was waiting for all of that. Let's uh. I can't even fake a dribble right now. Like, you know, the way the way John did the demonstration of picking up the chin, You got so let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah, I mean, but why you got your hands out like that? You don't have, you don't have Yeah, you gotta be like You're just bouncing the ball. You bouncing it. You bouncing it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know what to tell you. I I'm a beast when it comes to boxing, though. Real talk. I'm a okay. little funny with me when okay. it comes to boxing. Okay. Um, any other sport? Nah. So if you need, if one person, if one black person is all you need to break the stereotype, <laughs> consider it broken. Because <laughs> I am not naturally athletically inclined. Any sort of athletics, I have to. I have to put effort in. Um, I don't know where it came from, but I also, I kind of, I low-key kind of like it as well. <laughs> I think it intimidates the others when they think that, you know, we're, we're the best at everything and that all Black people are have the capability <laughs> to like play ball or run fast. Like, I like that. I like that feeling. It feels like we're superior. <laughs> 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 uh, and I like the intimidation factor of it. That's one thing I do like about sports that even if you can't play sports, it's fun sometimes to talk some smack. <laughs> no matter so, what. No matter what. No matter what. So what was the question again? Should we put it to bed? Is that Yeah, should we put it to bed, put that to rest? Or, you know, what are we doing with it? Clearly it's not true. It's not true, but uh, let's hang on to it. Why not? I don't feel hurt by it. I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's go ahead and hang on to it. Oh, no, I do. This probably, you know, Broad showed the dudes. Y'all are probably, like, Jai, y'all probably tired of hearing that y'all linebackers or whatever, tall dudes. Mark, you probably tired of hearing that you could ball, all of that stuff. Like, but it don't hurt me. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I dig it. So we we gonna hold on to that, especially since you know, in these sports, as you see, you turn on the NFL. What seventy, eighty percent of the NFL is black. Seventy, eighty percent of the NBA, or eighty five percent, is black. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean, and we're making strides in the other sports too. NASCAR. They got a few other guys in hockey yeah. that are are black. Matter of fact, one of the guys is playing tonight. The Rangers versus the Devils, game seven. Um, also in baseball, I know the percentage is a little lower, but you know, we definitely make a lot of strides in baseball as well. So mm -hmm. we'll hold on to it. Cause you know, a lot of us can play ball. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that I'm trash. <laughs> I scored my eight points mm -hmm. in fashion. Don't get me wrong. You know, I could dribble. I ain't got Steph Curry handle, but you know, I may do a little fade away. There you go. Fade yeah. away. And some some of some part of the reasoning, I believe, about how we fare in certain sports is about access. Because so some some sports are just more expensive than others. Yeah, yeah. Some sports are definitely way more expensive than others. So <laughs> we're gonna keep it moving right along. Another one that I came across um that you'll hear from time to time. You know, and this is probably one of the most ignorant thing I've probably ever heard in my life because it's saying um, more about the person that's saying it as opposed to who you saying this to in regards to how you're referencing them. You understand if you speak with some um, 
some thought and some logic and you put your words together to make it how I should say. Um, a term that I came across that I read, I just like how it sounds, it's called expressive fluidity. So what that means is you explain yourself to the other person so clearly and articulate to where they don't need to ask any questions. So if we do that, you may hear something along the lines of you're talking white. What does that mean? How does that sound? How does that make sense? Like I said, they're saying more about the person that's saying it than the actual person that's speaking. So I've probably said this before sometime during season one. Um, this is about 10 years ago or so. One of the supervisors that worked out in the field, we had never met, but I had to speak to her a lot on the phone in regards to my responsibilities. So we finally got to meet after about a, a year or so when she actually had to come up to the office. And she said, oh, you're Mark Mills. I said, yeah, that's me. She said, oh, my God, I thought you were white. Mm. But what was that based on? You understand? So just for conversation's sake, right? There are some white people named Tamika. You know? It is. You can't just assume that every single person in the world named Tamika is black. Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> For the sake of this episode, we're going to do that. Or we'll use a different name. But the reason why I brought that up, because my daughter, she says she hears that a couple of times. She doesn't like that. She thinks it's extremely offensive and ignorant. But she, re she responds back to it in a different fashion than me or depending upon who she's talking to, it may be something colorful. So I just brought that up because, you know, a lot of times what's happening now, they have a lot of shows that come on TV about depression for younger people. And every time I see something like that, the age is getting younger and younger. We got nine, 10, 11 year olds committing suicide. The first thing we assume, why, what have they been through? And they may, may be going through something like this, maybe a black kid, you trying to sound white. You're trying to be white. How do you do that if you're trying to be yourself? So we're going to spin the jar since I left off with D1 next. Speak on that in regards to sounding white. Yes, sir. Um, so I think it, it, I think I think it all stems from the environment again, proximity. Um, this is another this is another case of yeah, it's another environmental proximity case where um being being articulate in your speech is is rare. You don't hear it often. It's um it's a lot of slang and phrases thrown around, um, metaphor talk, slang talk, um, cadence, shortening of words, the uh that that's the di that's a dialogue. Um in in um in neighborhoods where we connect, where we connect with each other, us as black and brown people, that's that's just how we connect with each other with that type of dialogue. It's a, it's almost like um, it's a this is it's our own language mm -hmm. that we communicate with each other with. Um, you say you say a certain you say a certain sentence in a certain way, people can automatically relate, and so that's the so that's the assumption automatically. And then because, and we all know, I think um, we all know this because for, the, for those of us who are at jobs or work in a professional setting, um, there's a term called code switching, which we do. We code switch. Mm -hmm. and, and so we talk in, in a more articulate, in a professional manner that's associated in, in dealing with our Caucasian colleagues and counterparts because that is the culture that's set up, the corporate culture, the professional culture. And so we code switch to assimilate in that culture, in the workforce. And then when we when we get off work, you know, we, sh we shed that and we're more relaxed and we talk in our dialect with our fellow, with our fellow peoples. So it's, it's almost, it's almost like a, it's almost like an urban tribal thing. Where where we talk slangs among where we talk slang amongst ourselves, and so I think that when when you're talking to another person on the phone, um, 
I know for me, I'll speak for myself. So I can I can tell for the most part whether or not I'm talking to a black person or not, although they sound professional. It's something about the cadence and the voice. The cadence uh and the voice that I can tell, okay, I'm 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 talking, I'm although I'm keeping the profession in my mind, like, oh yeah, I'm I'm talking to a brother or a sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm saying on the other line, although we're both talking professionally. You know what I mean? So it could be the point where you code switch so good and you're and you're engaged in conversation engaged. The code switching is so good, the the cadence is so different that you when when the when you meet face to face, you're surprised. Um so and 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 in that case that's what that's what happens. Um we should do uh, with that stereotype we should do away with it because that's not um talking articulate does not mean that you're trying to be white or talking white. Um the fact that you can code switch and talk and talk um articulate just shows you're fucking intelligent. The fact that you can even code switch is intelligence. That's that's our that's our own special kind of intelligence. That we can we can talk we can talk in a way we can com communicate in a way with each other that people outside of us either they don't understand or they do understand the degree and they try to emulate. There's that too. Yeah, definitely that. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I can give an I can give an example of that. You know of, of that type of appro appropriation, um, working working in the corporate setting, and a white colleague is coming up to me trying to talk slang, <laughs> and I I didn't engage him. I kept it articulate. Like, don't try to don't try to appropriate or try to assimilate with me. This this ain't your thing. Yeah, I know it's you don't. Not you. Like yeah, this ain't you. I know it ain't you. You don't talk like this. Cause you sound corny. There's that again. <laughs> they don't even they sound, go to corny. They, they go to they go corniness. To corny. You know, you sound you sound like a white boy trying, as opposed to a white boy who grew up around us. There's a mm -hmm. difference. We, mm -hmm. we we have we have we have the knack to tell the difference too. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Antennas for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got antennas. That. We know when you're a genuine white boy that grew around grew up around us, as opposed to a white boy that's trying. Mm -hmm. We can pick that up. We're not stupid. So. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you're trying it, I'm not going to engage in you, with you on that level. I'm just, I'm going to keep it professional. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yes, I had a great weekend. How about yourself? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what's it? You know what's up? You know what's up, Jay? You was you was chilling. Yeah. I had a great weekend. Yeah, I had a great weekend. How about you? Yeah. How about yourself? <laughs> You know, I was just you know taking care of some things, you know, and uh, doing, some, doing some odds and ends, you know, <laughs> mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man. like fuck out of here, no. Playing spades. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You're not, you're not, like, you're not down. Get out of here. You're not down. Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? So that's my take on that. So we go. So we go. in on that real quick, though. C one. Go ahead. Go ahead. D one. Just um, I just want to highlight and enunciate the um, the critique that comes with that, right? That the sound in white somehow is better, um, and that's something that I particularly take issue with. I've never been accused of sounding white, <laughs> um, and I think it is because of you know my cadence, the bass in my voice, whatever it is. Um, but I do know the dynamic of. Um, having intellect being correlated with whiteness as if Black people can't be smart and intellectual. Mm, mm. But beyond that, also, I mean, I I don't want to be the one to take it back to slavery, but I'm going to take it back to slavery. Why? Come on. Because I also think it's it's like, it's hypocritical, it's insensitive. It is like, there's something really ugly about it that Black people's tribes, their tribal experiences were separated. I'm going to take you away from your tribe so that you can't even communicate when I put you together with people who speak another dialect. Mm -hmm. 
And so as we now in urban environments and maybe in suburban environments too, but my experience is one of an urban environment, we, we create dialects to communicate with each other. And now y'all are going to critique that too? Get out of here with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get out of here. Real talk. That's right. That's right. Nah, I, I, I dig it. I dig it. I mean, and, and just how that sounds and, and how you brought that home in regards to, and sure, that's just saying we can't be as intelligent. So our aim is to sound like outside of us, just educating ourselves. And then we speak like that with our kids. Our kids is going to learn slang on their own anyway, based on their friends. It's not like my mom and dad was talking slang in front of me, but I learned it from my friends. Mm -hmm. You just have to know your audience. Like, you know, Josh said with the code switching, I know they had a term for that. I didn't ever know if it was a term, and I never liked that term. There's a time and place for everything. As much as it is, I would like to answer the phone sometime. Yo, what's popping? I know that's not the place for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I would love to do that. Yo, what's up, man? What's good? Mm -hmm. Didn't do that. So you just have to know your audience, but we definitely going to put that one to rest. For any of you that's watching this, old, young, like I said, that's saying more about the person than it is about you. Just continue to educate yourself, articulate, and always express your fluidity. Remember that. That's the term. Use that. Add that to your vocabulary when someone say how you're trying to sound. <laughs> so D1, I'm going to spin this to you. This, this is a good one because... This is really like a hot button topic right now in a number of states. Um, I think it's a hot button topic in Florida and a number. Well, it's been a hot button topic depending upon. And it's a hot button topic for parents because they may feel this way about it, that way about it. doesn't matter. So I'm speaking about black history. <laughs> That's not necessarily a stereotype. This is what I'm posing to you. It's just something that came up because it keeps coming up. How should it be taught? Who should it teach it? Where should it start? Where should it end? What, what should be inclusive of Black history? Does this whole LGBTQIA fit into that? Does Black history have to do with just the civil rights era? And we learn from that or it's a mixed bag. So I'm just bringing that up to say, um, one of the questions is, should only a black person teach black history or can a white teacher teach black history or, you know, some other ethnicity? So I'm posing this to you, your thoughts on that, black history, how you feel about it, who should teach you, where it should start, you go in. Um, wow, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. There's a lot. There's a lot a to lot. unpack there. There's a lot. Take your time. Um, so I think my first thought is I'm conflicted about even the terminology Black history. I know why it exists, right? Mm. I know why the terminology exists. Mm. Um, I use the terminology myself. I'm not demonizing the terminology at all. But there is something about the terminology that then seems to allow people to disconnect from history that involves Black bodies as if it's not American history that has specifically American history on, on American soil, right? I'm speaking about in this country. I'm not speaking about other, you know, experiences that I, I can't. Um, but there's a lot of aspects of the ways in which black people, brown people, black bodies and brown bodies have contributed to this soil, to the experiences that we all benefit from now. And somehow that gets minimized and put in a box to, to be put to the side. We know we have some understanding of why that happens, right? Because how else can we get, how else can we be minimized if not disregarded? Um, but what 
what seemingly happens for Black history, right, when Black history is taught or recognized, it becomes slavery. That becomes it. Mm -hmm. It becomes slavery and it becomes rebellion and civil rights movement exclusively. There's something wrong with that too. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with that, that so many of us have gone through the education system hearing of the same names over and over and over again. Facts. Right. Rosa Parks, um, Martin Luther, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman, maybe Marcus Garvey, if we're lucky. Maybe. You know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah, real shit. Yeah. Like, that we hear the same names repeatedly, and that's packaged to us as Black history. Word. So our history is of of slavery. Our history is of servitude. Mm -hmm. exclusive. That's not my history. That's your history, actually. Because that's your history of being a colonizer. That's your history of taking advantage of multiple groups of people. That's actually not my history. Mm -hmm. My history is a history of power. My history is not that. That is yours. You learn that. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who teaches you that. Care, y'all get in the room together and learn that. That's not mine. So I think, honestly speaking, I don't think it matters who teaches it. I think it's oh, wow. okay. Everybody needs to get it. Everybody needs to get it. Now, are there spaces that maybe need to be held a little bit differently? Yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. There are spaces that need to be held different, but. I don't think there should be any rule regulation or expectation across the board about who can deliver the information. If you are in a white body and are incapable of delivering the information, you don't need to be a teacher. You don't need to be an educator. Why can't you deliver this information? Can you deliver Scottish history? Can you do that? Can you do, you can deliver every other experience you can deliver, you can talk about Jewish history, you can do that. You can talk about every other history except for Black history. You don't need to be here. Right. What are we doing? You just got me mad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that that's one of those topics. That's a hot button topic. That and this passionate. is for people that was what, that's passionate. passionate. And this is for people, whether you have kids or not, because from the looks of it, I ain't going to say all states, but in some states, the governor wants to have control over what you learn. So as much as it is we send our kids to school to learn, we have to educate them. Our kids learn in school, but parents educate. I always thought that was the difference with those two words. You understand? That's our job and our responsibility to educate our children. So now, if they're learning this, Black history, Whatever it is they come home with, hey, dad, I learned this today. Nah, son, listen. Hey, daughter, listen. Let me share with you this. Let me share with you about this. So for the most part, you have to wait until you get into college for you to really expand upon, you know, African-American studies, what they say. I don't really know if they offer this in high school. You have to wait till you get to college because in most colleges, that's an actual department that deals with African-American studies. So you have some people that are well-read and well-versed in that regard that they've championed that and they could teach that. You know, I wasn't expecting D1 to say anyone could teach it, so that, that threw me off. But, you know, it's, it's different. But like she said, if you could only teach one subject, you shouldn't be an educator. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, from my perspective, how I see it, I think the people that want to control how the history being taught, they don't want the young people that are coming up to know what took place 400, 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. They want to just erase that. Basically, they just want to have a clean slate and kind of say, listen, we know that happened. Let's just forget about that. It's unfortunate. Let us try to do better going forward and just learn from this part with the names we hear all the time. So as you know, when whenever they say it's February Black History Month, most of the names that you probably see come up in remembrance of, remember when this person did this, it's the names we hear all the time. We got to do our own research. 
Mm -hmm. You understand? So, Ja, I want to spend to you with the same topic in regards to that with the um, Black history being taught, more so along the lines of, um, I mean, I know your daughter's a whole lot older than this, but what age do you think would be appropriate for kids to learn about that? What age should that start? Man, listen, kids should start learning that as soon as they start talking. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because because to your point of view, one's point, uh, the Black History Month and what we learn about Black history is packaged in slavery and those five people. It's slavery and those five people. You know what I mean? Which which is it's 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 really it, and it's and that's really a whitewash. It truly is because it doesn't it it doesn't show any type of empowerment. It so it shows empowerment at a at a small level because what um what Harriet Martin and Malcolm did was was empowering and very powerful. You know we can't dismiss that, but it wasn't just those three people. It was more people. I mean, I mean, for me, and I just to your to your point, bro. Teachers, you learn in school, but parents educate. Yeah, I'm um, I'm a testament to that because um, my father educated me. You know, just a, just a share. I my father used to order these comic books called Scholastics, and in doing that, I used to read that it was in comic book form, and he had me do a report with them. Do you know this man? I didn't learn this in school, but you know this man had me learn about Crispus Attucks, Frederick Douglass, mm. Carl Woodson, Benjamin Banneker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't hear but you don't hear Sojourner Truth. Yeah. Shirley Chisholm. Yes. You you know what I'm saying? You don't you don't hear about these people. All the other names. All the other names that you don't yeah. hear about in school. Yeah. Marcus Garvey, of course, because he's Jamaican. You know, you had to throw Marcus in there. You you don't really hear much about Marcus at school. You hear about Marcus a little bit in certain schools. But all, all these great ancestors before us, and, and of course, in addition to in addition to Martin, Malcolm, Harriet, right? But mm -hmm. all those other all those other people that I named, Fannie Lou Hamer, mm. and, uh, Ida B. Wells. Yeah. Learn, yeah. Learn, learn about learn about all these people. Mary McLeod uh, Bethune. Mary McLeod Bethune, thank you. you know yeah. Um yes, and um, yeah. So all these people I learned outside of the school. Thank thanks thanks to my pops. You know what I'm saying? Shaka Zulu. You had me watch the Shaka Zulu movie. Yeah. You know I mean, so yeah. you know, Queen and Zynga. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My, yeah. my my dad my dad put me onto those people, you know what I'm saying? Not 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 this not this bullshit education system. To D one's point, that just packages up in slavery and five people, you know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like, so it's like I, I'm always thankful to him for that. You know what I'm saying? Always thankful to him for that. And so and it's a shame. It's a shame because our, our education system is is whitewashed, and those people need to be heard about. And I don't think our and I, I don't think our children know about those people and it, it is and it is our job to teach teach our kids about those people as soon as they start talking you know and i and i mean that wholeheartedly as soon as they talk start talking because they're going to get indoctrinated into a system that we have to put them in and the and the education of us is going to be limited still so that's my that's my take on it and you know it's a i mean if we having a conversation there's a lot of people right now that have the means to change this mm -hmm. and it's a lot of people that are trying trying to change it because they recognize the same that you recognize ja they mm -hmm. recognize the same things that d1 recognize that's why it is such a hot button topic mm -hmm. because this is going against so you know within the state the state has control over the department of ed border ed or whatever it is you want to call it for that particular state mm -hmm. so a lot of people are saying listen this needs to be taught different it needs to be taught in school everyone needs to know this this is like you once said it's not just black history it's history it's history period yeah. i think they have a problem with that word black being in the front of it it's history you can't it's escape history. it no matter where you go it's what it is mm. whether you teach it or not they're going to learn it unfortunately they will learn it later but we want them to learn it a whole lot quicker than once they get to college 
And I just want to be clear, like when we say them, we're talking about white kids too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, everybody. Everybody needs to know. All of them need to learn. Everybody needs to learn this. Everybody. Yes. And yes. I just want to, you were surprised that when I said like anybody can teach it and I stand by that. I feel like anybody could teach it because it's history. It. But I do think that there, by the time you get to maybe, you know, college or certain spaces, mm -hmm. you might need a, you might need a safe space as a black person to unpack your experiences, your mm. lived experiences. Mm. And maybe that needs to be a space guided and held by black people. But the learning of history, yeah, anybody could get it. Come for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Um, yeah, I like your views on that. That's one of those topics that we're going to circle back around to because I think more states are being resistant in regards to the changes people want to make with that history. So even if I don't mention it on here, you're going to hear about these things on the news. So we're going to spin back around to that. That'll come back up in another one of the topics. Um, the next thing I want to move on to in regards to this topic of uh, black stereotypes we discussed, and this is another one. We've heard this as age old since we were young and probably on. We may have heard it the last day or two, depending upon who you speak to. But this black stereotype, this one, um, well, I'm not going to say who I think it probably came from. Because I'm sure we probably all of the same mindset when we think who started this. But this stereotype is the one that says that all Black people look alike. <laughs> this is not true. Far from true is not true. For me, let's just put this one to bed, put this to rest. Let's not use that anymore. Right? So we're going to hear from both of them, JJ and D1 in regards to that. Last time they heard that, who people may have said that they look like, um, just just one of those things. And who they think started it? Because I have my thoughts who started that. So we're going to start with the Lady D1 first in regards to that. Um, who do you look like? Who people have said you look like? When the last time someone mentioned that to you and um, where you think it started, D1? Rock, rock out. Yo, I feel like you and Ja have told me I look like somebody. Who did y'all say that I look like? Yeah, we, we did, said that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did say you look like somebody. I forgot though. What from us? No, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't remember what I it is. Yeah, I ain't gonna front. I did say you you resemble somebody. Somebody. That's that's yeah, not, not helping much. You no, know, it's not it's not coming to me now, but I, I remember that. <laughs> I do remember that conversation. Yeah, I don't remember who it was, but we went through that for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or was it, maybe it wasn't that I looked like the person. Well, no, maybe it was how my hair was styled or something. Maybe, I, don't Rob, I was just going to say yeah, that. Style. That's what it was. It was a style. I was just going to say style. that. Style. There we go. Um, I don't get told I look like people very often, um, but... When This Is Us was on, and I don't know why I can't remember Beth's name. I think that, I think her character was Beth. She was the, uh, she was married to, I can't remember anybody's name right now. What was the black couple? This Is Us, that came on Channel 4, right? I think I so. That. Yeah, I remember that show, This Is Us, yeah. That's the um, crying show? Susan, Everybody... no. That's, a, that's an episode that be having people crying. That's a show to be having people crying. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Susan something, Kalichi, I think, or okay. something. I got that a few times. I think that was, that's probably more about mannerisms than anything. Um, I don't really get it very often, but I do remember when, this is like a good 30 years ago. I don't know who somebody thought I was, but they definitely <laughs> stopped me. And I was in Port Authority in, I think I was in either Baltimore I think I was in Baltimore Port Authority and somebody stopped me and asked me for my autograph because they thought I was somebody and I was like who, who exactly do you think I am and whoever they thought I was I said sure no problem and I saw <laughs> he was like fuck it all right <laughs> well, who, who did you sign as you don't know who, who they thought you were me. I don't even remember right now I don't remember who it was but I was like you think <laughs> 
Sure, let me let me sign that. Sign like, that. Who, who am I again? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's Amtrak right. Station. I'm, I was I'm me. <laughs> Listen, I signed to Janet Jackson. I was. Oh no. Oh, and I'm like, let see. me go ahead. Now we going too far. Now we're going to for now we go to for <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> wait, wait. Hold on, like, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. John Fly swing to you. Give me a minute, man. Let me let me get let me get my breath back. <laughs> you get on my nerves. You get on that's why you, you know and John are just alike. Y'all look like twinsies. You know what? The way the light hit. If I turn my head, you turn, come down a little and turn it. It's like a certain way. Yeah. Three quarter, right, right, a whole lap. I can see the resemblance. Just like that. Just, Just like that. Don't move. Stay right there. Don't even breathe right there. Right, right, right. Like Janet Jackson. Just hold it right there at that angle. Right there. It's like two. It's like right. two. Right. Mirror image. Whatever. I can't tell y'all two apart. Y'all get on my nerves equally. <laughs> Um, but I do, I do think we all have doppelgangers. That's a whole different story because, um, there was somebody when I was in my teenage time, um, somebody in my family would see this person on the train on a regular and would swear that it was me. And I'm like, how you don't know me? You got to know me. <laughs> um, so I think we do have all, we all have doppelgangers, but do we all look alike? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Where you think the origins of that came from? I'm just curious to see if, just throw out you... whatever you think. It's not right, not wrong. The origin of black, all black people look alike. I mean, you're, you're looking for a singular person or, or like, I think it came from white people. <laughs> No, no, no. It's more so in particular, I, I want I want I won't say that. I more so um a profession, I'll say. Oh. So people that work in this profession may have started that. And it's a reason why. If oh. you don't get it, I'll I'll see if Ja guess and then yeah, I'll tell I don't you know. Why. I'm yeah. I'm gonna back out of that one and leave that one up to Ja. JJ, who do you look like? What they said you look like? Oh Lord, man, listen. Who, who, how many people you done told that to, or if you've ever said that to anybody, and nah. who you think it come from? Holler at me. Dogs, dogs. Uh oh, what, what did somebody stopped you at the airport? Nah, nah, B, but my list is long, man. I mean, every, <laughs> every dark, everything, every dark skin brother with a mustache and beard, <laughs> I've been compared to. You know what I'm saying? I either look like him or remind him of him. You know what I'm saying? The list is long, man. The list is long. So, um, but the most popular one is Evander. Evander? Yeah. I, yeah. Can, I, I can see, see that. that. I can I see, see that. that. That's, the most, that's the most popular one. Uh, I never even thought about that, but I, I didn't never think that. about it either. Yeah, that's the most popular one I got. You know, being, you know, being rocking the ball, the, and the nose structure and all that. Yeah. When you um, hold your head back like that to the side. I can see it. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got rock him as well. I've got rock him when I was younger, because of, because of my nose and you know, <laughs> you know, the flat top. I got rock him out when I was younger. I still get rock him a little bit now, because you know the nose and he rock a baldy now. Yeah. So I, I get yeah. So I so I get Evander rock him. Oh my God! I've gotten. I was ugly. I've gotten. Joe LeBert, I've got <laughs> oh, God. tons of people. Tons of people. I've gotten why is this happening? Joe LeBert, yeah, yeah, when I, yeah. that's a Nova. Yeah. Wow, that's when I that's when I, that's when I rock the bed and it's clean shaven and cut. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what else? Um, who else? Paz and News from De La Soul. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you. The list Damn, is dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other episode right there, man. Yeah, you you yeah. can't list all 30. No, nah, I know. I know. I'm, it, so, 
a lot of comparisons, quite a few of the comparisons I got is because of the, my beard, how, how I keep my beard. So, I've, so I've gotten, I even got black thought as well. Um, if I, I wear, can see that. If I wear fitted. I can see that. Wear fitted with the beard. So people, people said I look like black thought. Um, oh my God, man. Like really any dark skin brother you can think of. Any <laughs> with a mustache and beard you think of. You know, wow. So, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, that's just, that's just the tip of the iceberg that I just gave y'all. But those are, those are the, well, those are the more popular ones I gave y'all. The other ones. Wow. Okay. The other, the other ones I don't want to name because I don't get it that much. So I don't think it's irrelevant to me. But nah, I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the names that I just said now, the more, more frequently, the most frequent. Yeah. Oh, the rap, thought... the rap alone. You know, the rap alone. Yeah, I, got I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. <laughs> I can. I can. <laughs> you know? I'm still with this Levert. That oh, that yeah. one threw no, me off, man. Levert threw me off pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Um, but um, any thoughts on where you think that came where, from? Where, where was the? Where did that come from? Um. <clears throat> All black people look like you says it, it's people. People, you think you you believe people in this certain industry started it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, modeling industry, people from the modeling industry. Now, so the mindset I had <clears throat> in regards to that. Well, first I'll say who people say I look alike. Mm -hmm. Um, my my list is very short. It's it's more so who people. More so people assume where I'm from as opposed to who I look alike. Mm -hmm. So who I've gotten the most, I've gotten Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. And I've also gotten uh, Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. Okay. I've gotten those two things most frequent. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, uh, majority of the time, I just get a lot of people that ask me from Africa. That's or they right. just, you know, they just come up with me. Are you from Ghana? You from Sudan, you know, they'll just say the place. Yeah, or they'll yeah. come up to me and start talking to me in French. Right. Wow. Okay. You know, I, I get that a lot. I get that a whole lot. I'd be like, nah, I'm American. You American. Oh my God. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I get that a lot. Yeah. So, you know, I I assume maybe they think we all look alike too. Yeah. So uh, my mindset in regards yeah. to that where this whole thing may have come from. I was thinking um, what I what I wanted to get was along the lines of law enforcement. So the reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of the times when something may have taken place, you know, they got to get on the radio. If the radio is sent, they got to say what kind of suspect they're looking for. You understand? So it may be two white right. cops. They're going to just pick up anybody. But... They don't fit that person doesn't fit the description of what was radio. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you could just see them just talking, yo, what about this guy? They all look alike anyway. I think it started with law enforcement. That's and right. lost I can see that. see that. I can see that. You know, they they're gonna just bring in anybody and they're gonna make it fit, right? So the person is 6'6, 260, and they pick me up. Mm -hmm. They're gonna make it work. Yeah. And I'm going to be questioned. I'm going to be held. I mean, right now, of course, it may be different in regards to that. But way back then, we didn't have no choice. Mm -hmm. They just bring it in anybody. Which they all thought we looked alike. So I, I think the origins of that started with law enforcement in regards to that practice. It's too much time to investigate. Too much time to go find the person that snatched the purse. We're just going to bring in anybody. You see what they did with the Central Park Five? Okay. Snatched them up. Beat confessions out of all of them and then jailed them. You see? And the actual name of, of the movie was When They See Us. I think yeah. that says it all. So mm -hmm. all those cops just assumed like they got to be guilty. They were in the park. Mm -hmm. So that's where my mindset was in regards to that as far as, you know, uh, people saying that we all look alike. Um, you so, yeah. Do we put it to rest? We keep it. We let it go. Just stop saying that. Or at least the three of us will stop using that. If we if we have ever. 
You understand? I mean, I do want Janet Jackson to continue on signing <laughs> autographs, you know, depending upon where she at in the light hit or what have you. Turn um, my head the right way. <laughs> your head the right way. Kimberly at least I said you look like. That's what I said. Who oh, was it? Kimberly Elise. Oh, from Senator Elise. Yes, that's what I said to you. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even remember who it was. Right? That's yeah. her, right? She was in Set It Off. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can't believe yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's what we said? I'm guilty. I said that. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> she pulled me into that. <laughs> yeah, because I thought it was something that both of y'all said, but no, that, that I'm not going to give you that one, C1. So I got to take that one on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got like four or five more things, but it's highly unlikely we're going to get to those. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to revisit this topic in regards to that, because there's more stereotypes that we could break down, we could speak upon, like, dislike, may have used, yes, use. But it's just that we're able to talk about it and educate other people in regards to these things and how it may hurt others. But when I review this topic, when we swing back around, Mm -hmm. I want to start with the stereotype about the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. That is a stereotype. It does not exist. Regardless of what you heard, what you've seen in movies, TV shows, that is a stereotype. Give you a thousand examples where that's not the case, but unfortunately is prevalent. So next time we swing back to this, that's where we're going to start off at. We're going to start off with D1 on that. Kim, why are you squinting? I mean, D1, she, why are you squinting? Why are you she, squinting? She can share her <laughs> thoughts and her ideals and angry black you know, woman. going to get hot under the collar about that. We're going to touch on that. but I don't care. Y'all yeah. can keep it. Keep that one. No problem. No problem. <laughs> you're going to get all, all of it. Already. No you're, you're already getting a tidbit already. <laughs> Listen, not right, not wrong, 92.6, the spot. We got JJ in the building, D1 in the building. The topic tonight was Black Stereotypes. Please watch and enjoy YouTube, subscribe. We on everything where you get your podcasts, you name it. Apple, Amazon. Um, what's the other one? Spotify. I can't even think of all the Spotify, Spotify. Spotify. All the places. All the places. Just check it out. Watch it with your peoples. Listen to it. Bluetooth it. Play it at work. All that fun stuff. This has been great. This is Dark Mark of the Trio. Peace.